boys and girls. As you can tell by the title, we have a 1985 Honda ATC 125M that is popping out of gear. Three things that I think we're going to need today that's going to be helpful. The first thing is going to be the manual impact screwdriver to, I believe, to remove the clutch basket or the centrifugal clutch. This is gonna be the clutch removal specialty tool, and I have the link in the description, which should be the corporate of my issue, the detent lever. So with a bunch of these, they bend from cracking or they break. I think mine is bent, and that's why it pops out of gear. Normally if it breaks, it won't go in gear at all. I guess first thing first, we need to remove the seat and the rear fenders. We need to drain the oil. Oil is draining. It smells terrible. It smells like gas. So I am going to have to remove the exhaust because there's a Phillips head right there that I can't get to. So it looks like it's going to be a 10 millimeter bolt here and maybe two eights or two tens on the pipe. So the muffler is bolted on in two spots. One up top and one at the bottom. So now we can get to that bottom Phillips head right there. So it's two Phillips head at the bottom and then we can get this sock cover removed. All right, so this part is gonna be for the people who took it apart and can't figure out how to put it back together or at least what bolts go where. So we have like one, two, three, four, five different length bolts. So you have one long bolt. The longest bolt of them all goes in the far back left hole. The six that are all the same size go around the perimeter. This long bolt, the longer hex head bolt goes on the bottom under this bracket. This bracket goes like so, I guess to support the starter. The long bolt goes in the bottom of that. And then the hex head short bolt goes up top. And then these two shorter ones are the ones that go in the starter itself. So this will probably be my reference on which bolts go where upon reinstallation. Uh, but I'm sure somebody else might be watching this wondering where their bolts go as well. So now with everything off and I did remove the um, The foot to get to those bolts. I don't know if I said that or not It should be time To try to remove this cover. Let's get this thing a couple of taps. I don't have a rubber mallet So hammer it is and have the oil pan underneath um, Just in case you have some residual in the bottom of the side case Everything looks clean in here. So now it's time to disassemble the centrifugal clutch so we can remove it. Uh, first thing we're going to do is remove the inside Phillips screws. So we're going to use our manual impact to get the screws loose. We got it loose. Alright, so now that the screws are removed. Let's get the outer clutch cover removed. All right, and the gasket is still in good shape. There are locking pins, like if you see right there in that corner, there's one right there that's locked, and there's one right there that's locked. So if you see the bottom, about 5.30, and about 6.30, so we're just going to bend those locking pins out of the way. And then our clutch removal tool right here should lock onto the clutch. And we should be able to take it loose. We got those tabs out of the way. Our tool locks in there firm. So let's see if we can break it loose. All right. So we have the clutch nut off. 
and now the clutch basket should just slide right off. Oh, there's something behind it. And the gear came with it. So we're just gonna sit this all as one assembly off to the side. All right, I have my snap ring pliers. And you wanna be careful because these will disappear and you will never find them again. All right, so we got that off. This gear should slide right off like so. And then here is what's hopefully our culprit, but it doesn't look like it's our culprit because it looks perfect. It doesn't look bent, it doesn't look cracked. It looks perfect. Shoot. since I can't return it anyway. And maybe we'll see what the issue is. I don't know, but why not? It's not gonna hurt to replace it while we're in here. So we have the new one and the old one and they look exactly the same. The old one is not cracked, doesn't show any type of wear, but like I said, I'm in here, it's gonna take two seconds to replace it, so why not? They look exactly the same. Uh, I will put the part number in the description just in case you do need one. All right, so the sock covers back on. All the bolts are just on here snug. So I'm gonna let, I'm gonna let this sit for a little bit, let the RTV uh, dry before I give it a final tug. I will put the footrest back on and the exhaust. 
I gotta get some oil, some 10W40 motorcycle oil for wet clutches. And then we'll be ready to take it for a test ride and see if it fixed it or if I just wasted uh, a bunch of time. All right, let's go for a ride and let's see how it goes. Let's see, make sure the transmission is in high. And what can y'all see? Let's go for a ride. Can y'all see? She is running good, goes through all the gears good, it didn't pop out of gear in it. I'm going to say that that's a win. Runs good, not popping out of gear. So I feel like it's ready to invest some money into it. So, and I guess I'll keep track of how much money I put into it after each episode and add it up, I guess. Run like a little running tally. But I mean, she runs good. I need to check the style pressure. I don't know if it's too much in there. But runs good. The brakes suck. So I'm going to do a tank queen and a car rebuild probably next. And then front shoes and rear shoes. And then a seat cover and probably a new a new muffler. But she runs good. She's pretty strong. The the lifters 
seem to make a little bit of noise. So y'all let me know if that lift of noise is normal or if I need to go in and adjust the uh, the valves on it. I have filler gauges, I've seen videos, and I got the Honda book on how to do it. So y'all let me know if these are loud or if they need to be adjusted. But that's going to be it for this video. I mean, hey, I'm, I'm happy with it. So, problem solved. Now we're starting to put money into it to make it rideable and halfway safe. So, until next time, peace.